Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about centroids in three dimensions. Uh, we've already done centroids in 2D, that's kind of what this whole beginning part is, a review of, of what we mean by centroids in in 2D and, and basically it's just a, some kind of shape with a very thin thickness. Uh, we derived some equations, we've already done some integration and then we, uh, this was the very first uh, way we looked at this is we said that we could either have a line or a 2D shape and we can uh, figure out the, the actually it's meant to point down here, we can look at the uh, shape as, as several different pieces and parts like several triangles or rectangles or squares and if we do that then we know that our centroid is just equal to the sum of our x bar times our uh, length or w divided by our total w. We weren't even using weight. Awful, awful review, but let's just talk about it today. It doesn't make much more sense once I do this. So, uh, so there's three different ways, uh, three different ways we can look at these 3D objects. One is by looking at solid pieces, meaning I'm looking at an object's volume. So that's kind of like this top one here. And with an object's volume, our equations become something like this, where I have the x bar is equal to the sum of the x bar volumes over the sum of the volumes, y bar is sum of the y bar volume over the volume, and sum of the z bar volume over the volume for my z centroid. So it looks real similar to what we did in 2D. Uh, the only difference is we have these, these volume pieces. The second way we can look at this is is if we're treating these as almost like thin plates. So instead of a volume, what I would have is like an area of each side, right? So this would be like side one, side two, side three, versus before I'd have a volume of shape one, shape two, shape three. Uh, so instead of the volume, what we're gonna talk about is uh, centroid for an area. And for an area, my equations look very similar, except now what we have is sum of my x bar times area over the sum of the, oops, sum of the areas. And the same for the y and the z. Uh, the last way we can look at this is if first we do a solid, then we do a volume. Last one is if we have these rods or treat them basically as lines each one of these lines, so here I have one, two, three, four different lines would have its own little centroid and its own little centroid would have a distance in the x, y, and z directions. So our last one is centroids for lines or rods. Just like the others, in this case my x bar is equal to the lengths. So the x bar times the length over the sum of the length of each segment, y bar is equal to the sum of my y bar lengths over the sum of all my lengths. And of course, z bar is equal to the sum of my z bar length over all of my lengths. So let's take a look at an example of how this works. Oh, before I go there, um, there is a uh, an idea of these composite shapes uh, for 3D, and you can see, you know, you just look it up. Uh, hemisphere, uh, we have a volume. And we have an x bar, you know, our distance from this edge over type of thing. So, uh, and then there are our, we looked at these last time. These are the 2D shapes and also the, the lines. So sometimes you have to look up those with unusual shapes. A lot of these can be made up with just normal rectangles and circles and things like that. So let's look at an example. Um, now, in this type of example, example, the first thing you need to do is identify, you know, what am I doing? Are these going to be solids? Are these going to be areas? Are these going to be lines or rods? And in this one, I do see that I have some kind of width to this whole thing. So I'm going to do volumes, uh, and then I have to break it into different volumes. Now, uh, if you were to look at this one, this is what a, a, something that looks like, like an area, right? You can see how it's a thin plate with no real thickness here. Uh, so if you're going to model it like that, you would use plates, and of course you can do this one for lines. I'm only going to do the one example in this video, just because of time constraints. So if I'm going to break this into different pieces, what I chose to do is is make my my back rectangular shape, something like that, and then this little quarter circular shape, uh, shape number two. I have two holes here, so I have shape three and shape four that I'll be subtracting from from this whole thing. Uh, what we are given 
is that the diameter of each hole is one inch and we are asked to find the uh, center of gravity or the centroid. All right, so after I have those shapes, uh, I can see that I'm gonna be subtracting out those two circles, right? So I have this kind of rectangular shape and I'm gonna add on this little quarter circle shape. And I'm gonna subtract out these two of the little circles. Um, so just like before, I think it's easiest when you're first starting out to do these problems to come up with a table. And my first uh, column on this table would be the shape. And I say I have shape one, shape two, shape three, and shape four. Second would be the volume. Now my volume is going to be in inches cubed. Uh, so for shape one, I look up here and I see, well, it's, it's 4.5 by... 0.5 wide. I still need its depth. Now I'm getting its depth from the fact that I know that this is two inches from a as a quarter circle. So of course it must be two inches if I were to bring it all the way down to. So my total volume uh, is multiplying those three together, which gives me 4.5 inches cubed. All right. So looking at shape number two, um, the way that I chose to do this, I said, well, I know the area <clears throat> of a quarter of a circle. Uh, that would just be one quarter times pi r squared, r being two squared. And then I can just multiply that times this depth of 0.5. And that gives me a volume of 1.571. And shape three uh, is just a circle. And so I just do the area of the circle times its depth. Now I'm going to put a negative in here because it's it's actually it's it's missing it's it's not there it's a hole so I'm going to have my pi um, given that the diameter is one so I'll do pi r squared uh, sorry 0. 0.5 times the depth of 0. 0.5 and that gives me something like what minus 0. 0.3927. Same idea with the number four, it's the exact same, so minus 0.3927. Uh, once I have the volumes, the next step is to identify where this X bar is for, for these shapes. And for shape number one, uh, what I'm saying is my X bar is out this direction, and since the whole thing is uh, 0.5, my X bar would be 0.25. For shape number two, um, two, is a, two is a little more complicated. I'd have to go back up and say, uh, you know, and, and it's, this is where you have to be kind of careful too. Am I, am I come up here and trying to find this thing as a solid? Because if I do, I won't find anything. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, if it were like a, um, an area and I had a, a quarter uh, of a circle, because that's, that's what I do have, and now we're looking at this distance over this X bar. I see that it's 4R over 3 pi. So that's how far it is uh, along this direction, right? Now that is also only from that point right there. So, so what I would have is this 4 times the radius is 2. So this is 4R over 3 pi. But I have to add in the fact that I have to bring it all the way back. So I have to add in that other 0.5. I'm give myself a little more room. And that gives me like 1.35. Uh, for shape number three, we have, uh, it's just half of that 0.5. So that would be 0.25. And same thing with shape four. Continuing the process with my Y bar the height of these of each individual shape. Let me clear this out just a little bit. Uh, when I talk about the height for object one, I see that my Z axis is up here. So it's actually below the Z axis at the total depth down of two. So I'm gonna put a minus one, make sure you get your negatives in there. And every one of these is gonna be below that X Z plane. So it all has to be negative. Shape number two, uh, I'm gonna end up with negative point eight, four, nine. If you wonder where that's coming from, that's basically just that four times two over three pi. It just doesn't have that 0.5 added onto it. Uh, shape number three minus one and shape number four minus one. And for my Z bar, 
uh, what I have for shape number one is now coming all the way back from this edge over here 4.5 divided by 2 which is 2.25 for shape 2 uh, it's just a width right there 0.25 because it's only in halfway shape number 3 is my first hole so it has a distance of 1.5 uh, this 1.5 you have to be careful you might be uh, you might want to be tempted to say it's just one but that one is to this inside face I have to add in that 0.5 and then the last one is same idea I have 3 plus that 0.5 or 3.5 so the next step is just to multiply through to get your X bar volume Y bar volume and Z bar volume so let's do that and here's what I get bam like that throw it all in there so uh, after I multiply all those through and add them all up uh, also noting that I do have something like my my Y bar these things are two negatives added together so I end up with a positive but keeping all my signs straight I sum up all my values the last step is just to say my X bar is equal to the sum of my X bar volume over the sum of my volumes or 3.048 over 5.286 giving me some value of 0.577 inches and it's good to go back and say does that seem realistic and it does and same idea for the Y and the Z and after I have my Y and my Z done, um, I am done with the problem. So, hope you found that uh, enlightening, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks.